Good evening and welcome to our AAIP treatment planning session. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, one of the cases that we had this week and went over just to discuss um, what we do, what we plan for a patient, what we see in a patient, and uh, the options that we give with a patient. So this evening, before we get started, do you have anything you want to announce or anything? Yeah, we're doing something at 9 o'clock or an hour from now. Yes, yeah. we are. We're doing a bonus an, uh, a bonus webinar tonight at 9. If you haven't already signed up, then do so. Uh, we still um, can take those requests and send you the link to that, 9 o'clock tonight. So if you are interested and you have not signed up yet, then please uh, email us and we will send you that link. Good. So let's talk about this case. This is, uh, we call it converted, converting a stage case. That's really not, oh, it's kind of true. Um, but let's talk about this patient and see what I mean. Um, and it shows what happens when a patient is given a choice, it is given the tools to make that choice. So let's see if I get to that point. Okay, so, okay, so this patient calls. Um, I'll read it to you in case you're listening to this in the car, if you're listening, listening to this on, uh, on your DVD, CD, or <laughs> MP3 or MP4 or whatever you're doing. Okay, so patient's referred by internet referrals. Patient has a partial that she had from a car accident years ago. Patient also has an implant along with a bridge that she would like to replace, all with Cerarut, you know, Cerarut ceramic implants. Patient talked about all in four. She's obviously educated. And Jennifer explains that... I'd like to, I'd have to determine what would be needed. We never do all in four, even with titanium. Um, <laughs> explained why, and patient said she understands. Yes, I don't do four implants. Um, and I, you all know the reasons why, and some of you agree, and some of you disagree, and that's fine. We all have our own things that we like to do. Patient will have additional questions for the doctor when he calls. Notice she's preparing the patient for my phone call. As far as her options using Cerarut, the limitations there may be. I, uh, she explained the cost of the steroid implant for the crown, $6,500 to $7,000 uh, for each. Patient understands. I've seen a few doctors in the Vero Beach area, which is about an hour away from me, with differing, differing opinions on whether titanium implants should be placed on the day of the extractions or extraction of bone graft and wait before placing the implants. You all know the arguments. Um, CT scan has not been taken, um, so the opinions were rendered, were rendered without a CT scan. What does that tell you? And what does that tell the patient when Jennifer says, well, has a CT scan been taken? Well, CT scan is what we use for diagnosis of these cases. See, it's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking, it's diagnosis. That's what's important. Okay, so um, anyway, um, she explained the $79 consultation. We talk a lot about that and explained uh, that I'll call, um, I guess, the next day. And so and the patient scheduled a few, a couple of weeks afterwards. So all of this is taken by Jennifer, and Jennifer, of course, records that so that I have this available when I make my phone call. So I make a phone call. I find out she's been a dental assistant. She's a dental assistant for 20 years. Um, she worked in oral surgery. She had 6, 8, 9, 11 on the upper with, uh, or she has, that's what she has left with an implant number four. Notice she knows everything. She has a lower fixed bridge. She grew up in Norwalk. I went to Yukon. We start to bond a little bit. We start to do geography, you know. Part of this is to get, get um, you know, the patient's history, but part of this is to develop a relationship. And sure enough, so I can make, I make notes and we can talk about where she was and where I was. And, and then when I see her two weeks later, I look at my notes and I can figure this out. And so we continue the relationship. So I went to UConn. I went to UConn, UConn preschool. I was UConn <laughs> graduate school. I guess we're the, the opposite <laughs> ends of that. She assisted a periodontist. I mean, all of these things. And we talked about the limitations of zirconia implants. But notice, the patient was referred to me because I do zirconia implants. Came through the Sararoot site. You know, if you do zirconia implants, you'll be listed on the Sararoot site too. And therefore, it's another source of referrals. All you have to do is buy a few implants. And now you're on the Sararoot site. We get referrals from the steroid site probably, what, five, ten times a year? We do. Okay, it's not a ton, but it's worth something. And she also had seen Dr. I, I wrote it down as Dr. Gupa. I had never heard of Dr. Gupa. Maybe you've heard of this doctor in Las Vegas website, and she was talking about that. So what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to say goodbye first, 
And then I'm going to look up Dr. Gupa's website. And it's not Dr. Gupa, it's Dr. Gopa. Okay? And now I see what Dr. Gopa does. So now I can, and now I'm prepared when the patient comes in and we're doing a monolithic type of zirconia prosthesis. We're not doing an immediate bar acrylic type of prosthesis. Notice, notice he's showing that. Yes, he's doing it immediately. When you talk, to, talk about whether you can do an immediate perma, permanent prosthesis, I was the first one in Central Florida to have done, what do they call it? Teeth in an hour. an hour. Yeah, I was the first <laughs> one. I don't do it anymore. But there are some people who are doing immediate permanent prosthesis. They're doing it within 24 hours. They're doing it, and they're compressing the tissue, and they say everything's coming out okay. We'll argue with the, back and forth about that. I may try a couple and see if it works. But and besides that, we have a laboratory right next door to us, and we'll be able to do zirconia in 24 hours, and isn't that special? Uh -huh. So there are a lot of things that we're going to be doing as far as planning and changing because of the availability of the laboratory that uh, is going to be, it's not our laboratory, but they're renting space from us, and they're next door, door to us, and yes. as far as we're concerned, they're our laboratory, and, and we're going to talk about that. We'll talk about more and more about that, because as we're developing periodontal practices, and we're de de developing full-service practices, we've got to see how can we make the service better and better and better. How can we make it um, as, as good as any of the other places that you see advertised? <clears throat> so we'll talk more about that. I know I'm always pushing you too far, and I got it. I know, I know. Will you ever give up? No, I won't give up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so here are the assistance notes. And so this uh, comes from Tasha, and she says the patient's had a heart murmur. Um, she's interested in solid bite in the upper and maybe snap. So understand she's already interested in a full fixed prosthesis in the upper arch before she ever walks in. Um, or maybe snap. Snap is essentially the locator attachment type of thing. Um, Tasha explains the patient we don't typically don't do upper snaps. I don't. I don't do upper locators. I chance of failure is too high. Unless the patient is real old or something like that, I won't do it. Um, and talks about why we don't do that. Patient wants to know if we can use the implant that she already has, and number four, for upper solid bite, upper solid bite, yes, patient would also like to know if we can replace the bridge on the lower. She has a fixed bridge on the lower. You'll see that in a moment. Okay, so we look at her. We know she has a heart murmur has heart pal palpitations occasionally, but there's really nothing here where she's, she's taking any medications, and she had a history of facial fracture, uh, car accident 65, she's taking no meds, um, and these are my notes. Sense of evaluation, I'd like to have upper solid bite, wants to have her bridge replaced. The lower arch, she's had bridge work done, this is a fixed bridge work, there have been patches under the bridge work on the facial aspect which go subgingively, and on the upper arch she has an existing implant number five. So we've got that. You'll see that in the x-rays in just a moment. Just remember, patients want four things. You remember, patients want four things. What do they want? I want you to say it to yourself. They want to smile. What's next? They want to chew. That's right. What's next? They want to be free of pain. Good. What's next? Come on, you remember this one. They don't want their mouths to stink. Yes, you're periodontist. You specialize in stinky mouths. Congratulations or in solving the problems of stinking mouth. So here we are. Here's a periodontal examination. Pretty good. Okay. I didn't even probe the upper because we knew we were taking the upper teeth out. On the lower arch, you can see there are no pockets there. Okay. Well, one little formula with pocket on the um, distal lingual aspect of tooth number 21. Okay. So we did a restorative examination, and the bridge is wearing away on tooth, tooth numbers 21, 23, 24, 25, 26. So she's worn right through it. In other words... She, we can see that uh, the porcelain is worn away and the middle is showing. Um, there's impingement upon the attachment apparatus, number 21 and 22. So what does that tell you? If we replace the bridge, we're going to have to do crown lengthening. This carries under the crowns, numbers 28F and 29M. What do you think we're going to have to do there? Probably crown lengthening as well. So now I'm starting to develop the treatment plan in my mind. What are we going to have to do in order to be able to keep these uh, th this uh, this patient's um, Okay, so, all right, so upper solid bite and lower off, I, lower I say we're going to take the crowns off the teeth, we're going to take the fixed bridge off the teeth, we're actually going to have to do a diagnostic wax up in order to be able to set up the correct bite on the lower, because the bite on the lower doesn't necessarily match the bite on the upper, I didn't even show you the patient's pictures yet, what am I doing? I haven't even shown you the patient's pictures yet, <laughs> well, I've gone this far, I'm not going to, I'll show them to you in a minute, okay. So then we'll uh, do 12 units of crown and bridge on the lower, and then 12 units of crown lengthening. How do I do crown lengthening? I don't do it by tooth. I do it by amount of time that I'm going to take. 12 units. Each unit is 10 minutes. I always treatment plan this way. I treatment plan 12 minutes, 12 units. That means it's going to take me two hours 
to the, do the surgical procedure. Yes, I do it that way. Yes, I know insurance doesn't like that. But when you're not beholden to insurance companies, I don't care. Do you care? Nope. You don't care either? Okay. All right. Um, and I said the patient has the choice of doing implant number 19. You have no idea what I, I'm talking about. The patient says she, li she likes the size of her teeth, and I tell her she's going to be able to keep the length of the same length of her size of ledger. So let's show you this already. My goodness. What did I do? I didn't show you the case. They're in suspense. They're in suspense. All right. Let's go into suspense. Let's get out of suspense. So here she is. Now you're dying to see that. So now you see... How oh, she's worn teeth a little bit, a little bit of bruxism, maybe, yeah, maybe a smidge. All right, and that's a little bit out of focus, but you can see the depth of the overbite. So we got about sixty percent overbite. There's no overjet there, and that's the deal. Okay, she's worn on one of these. Oh, okay, there's a smile shop. So you can see, and this is a bit of a reserved smile, I think. And so nice people want to talk to me. Um, then we've got, um, what's next? Let's take a look over here, and we've got this right here, and we take a look at, this is the partial denture she's wearing. Now, notice that she has worked in the past. She's worked for a dentist. 20 years she worked for a dentist. This is what she has now. I don't know how she got to this point. I really don't. But that's essentially where, where she is now. So <clears throat> take a look at the case. Let's take a look at the x-rays. And we take a look. There's that lonely implant that was used to support some kind of removable attachment. Um, up in the number four area, and there are the upper teeth. Bone support isn't bad. Recurring caries all over the place. Caries have been passed or not passed, but recurring caries all over the place. Lower arch. We've got teeth. Open margin. Teeth. That's probably an exaggerated open margin, uh, at least on the radiograph. But clinically, I, I noted or, or not only an open margin, but caries. And... You see this margin has been patched here on the mesial tooth number 28. And we've got 29, 30. And so we've got all of these teeth in place um, the way they are. Are these teeth restorable? I think so. Bone support's good. Teeth aren't mobile. And the fact that she has some wear on the teeth, yeah. <clears throat> she has some wear on the teeth. There's no reason on earth why we can't restore these teeth. But what will it take? Well, let's go back and let's look at the photograph once again. And so we look at the photograph once again, and we take a look at how things line up. Well, we have kind of reverse, no, it's not a reverse curve of speed, but certainly an exaggerated curve here where tooth number 30 is a little bit higher, quite a bit higher than tooth number 29, 28. And so we don't have an ideal occlusal plane in the lower arch. So before we're going to do a fixed bridge here, what do we know? Number one, we have patches below the gum line, so we know we're going to have to bu do buildups in order to be able to support these teeth. Number two, given the position of the uh, restorations, it's likely we're going to have to do crown lengthening, as we said before. But what are we, what are we going to have to do first? We're actually going to have to do a diagnostic wax up in order to be able to create the ideal occlusal plane, because we want to make temporaries that essentially um, uh, mimic what we want the upper to occlude with so the upper can be really, really good. So we want to plan this all, all in advance. So even if you're working with a restorative dentist, which most of you are, essentially you want to be able to treat and plan for a diagnostic wax up for crown lengthening on 20, 21, 22, 27, 28, uh, for, uh, 28, 29, and 30, because that's likely what's going to happen. You're not going to know until the fixed bridge work um, uh, goes in. You're going to do buildups on all those teeth, as I said, and maybe you're even going to do an implant in tooth number 19. What do you think? Maybe you're going to do that. Um, by the by, the way, the patient doesn't care that she doesn't that she doesn't have a molar on the lower left side. That's fine. She doesn't have to have it. Um, if we're going to split these teeth together, um, that's okay. So you can now essentially 
find out what the patient's what the doctor's chronobridge fee is for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten units. Um, could possibly be eleven units because there's only three in sizes here. But let's say let's say ten units. You can figure out figure out what the fee is. You can find out what the buildup fee is. You can figure out what the diagnostic wax up fee is, and you and you already know what your crown length fee is. So you're presenting that to the patient. We want a single doctor presenting the entire global fee. Okay, one person. And who should it be? It should be us. It should be you. The patient doesn't want to hear. I'm going to do this here, and I'm going to do that there, and I'm going to pay this here, and I'm going to pay that there. Sure, they're going to pay that in two different locations, but they want to hear about the entire fee in one source. That they, 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 So would you. Imagine if you bought a car, you say, well, pay this much for the car, but you know, go over to the tire shop, and they'll tell you how much the tires cost. You know, you're just not going to do that. So we got to get into global fees. You've got to be in contact with your restorative doctors. But frankly, everybody has the same crown and bridge fee, you know, within a couple hundred dollars, three hundred dollars maybe. Everybody has the same build-up fee, you know, so what are you going to do? You might overestimate, but then when the patient actually finds out how much they have to pay the restorative dentist, you think they'll complain that it's going to cost a thousand dollars less than what you quoted? Of course not. But they want to hear the entire fee from you, and that's that you have to be prepared for that. Let's take a look at the CT. Okay, so we look at the CT. We'll look at the upper CT because she wants solid bite, and we look at the position of the implant. Okay, what do you think of the position of the implant? I don't like the position of that implant. If we're going to do solid bite in the upper, do you think I want an implant sticking out five millimeters from the bone or four millimeters of from the bone? Heck no! I don't want that. That's in the way. Essentially, I want to make sure that we can do the alveolectomy where we need to do it, and I don't want a honker of an implant in my way. So the implant's coming out, okay? And I have to explain it to the patient as to why that's going to occur because I need to have everything level here. I need this level, and if I have this little post sticking out of here, it's not going to be level, and that means this is going to be sticking down, and because that's sticking down, the material is going to be weak, and if the material is weak, then the material has a chance of cracking, and it's not going to charge you, it costs you any more if I do four implants, five implants, or six implants anyway, so let's take it out and let's put the implant in the right way. What patient is going to say no to that? But it's the way we explain it. It's the way we, 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 we make it sound logical. Not make it sound logical, it is logical, right? So we want to make sure that that's happening. Um, but there we go on the upper arch. You'll find there are some places we can put implants in, some places we might be, not be able to, but for the most part, we're seeing a ridge width here of five and a half, which is fine. It's probably a little bit more than that. It was real quick. It's probably closer to six. Notice my lines are a little bit short uh, of the of the, um, of the cortex of the bone. So. Um, anyway, it's six millimeters. We're gonna have, we'll have plenty of bone to place implants here. And so she can do solid bite in the upper arch. Yes, on the day of surgery, we extract the teeth. We'll take out the implant. We'll put in five or six implants or even seven if we have to. And we'll fix a temporary prosthesis all at one time. Standard. Always do it. Almost never not, not do it. So what about the lower arch? So lower arch, what are we going to find out? Okay, number one, you look at your ridge thickness. Because you're going to have to do crown lengthening on this ridge. You know, it's going to be a little bit of work, particularly in this, these areas of thicker bone. So you get an appreciation from that. If you go to the Nanomar software or something similar to that, here's what you're looking at here. So we want to put an implant in here. We want to put an implant in here. And just get an idea as to what would occur if implants were to be done. Just to give that perspective, we'll put some implants in the upper arch as well. And we'll angle this implant around the sinus. Can't see it very well on here, but you know, there's a sinus there. And I'll put a series of implants in. I'll usually put six in the upper because that's what I want to put in. I want to put six implants in the upper arch, ideally. Um, and we'll angle that. And on the lower, four, five is fine. So now we'll take a look at this. And Here we go. Okay, implant fits. It's 3.8. This is BioRisons. I've been using BioRisons implants for, oh, uh, what? Ever since you've been here. Yeah, no. Like, was no, I using no bed one? Yeah. Okay. All right. It wasn't long after you got here, was it? I don't, uh, you don't remember. So long ago. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, it was. 
Okay, so we put the implants in. Of course, the patient's always impressed we put the implants in. That's a, some, that's a nice thing to do. And uh, so we do that here. You can see the implant better. Okay, and we do that. I don't have to bore you, but we do the same thing on the upper, and we do the, say, the same thing on the lower so the patient, patient can see that. Okay, so that's where we are. Let's go back into the... Um, treatment plan. So I've already given you a treatment plan. I'm giving, Danielle wasn't the assistant, but Danielle talked in detail with the assistant today so that she can be prepared. So so essentially the patient leaves the treatment, leaves the operatory with, we're going to save the lower teeth, we're going to do the upper teeth, we're going to do solid bite in the upper, we're going to do all the things we talked about, diagnostic wax up and, you know, buildups and everything we talked about. And then she goes back into the consultation room. Yes. We have three consultation. No, we actually don't have two consultation rooms. We right? have three, we have but three. we have two favorites. Two favorites, okay. So you want to take over? What do you want me to do? Sure, All sure. Right, so um, you're talking to the patient. So I'm. Um, well, first I just want to say, but what we're, what we're, what we do is, th this patient has already come into our office pretty excited about treatment. She has spoken to Jennifer, which is amazing on the phone. And for those of you who have been members with us for a while, have heard her on the phone. Um, she just gets up close and personal, and patients just love it. So she's already spoken to Jennifer. She's spoken to Dr. Sheldon. She, before she even walked in the door, she couldn't wait to get in here. She knew she wanted some work done. You could see her pictures. You can see why she wanted some work done. She found us on the Sarah website. So is, money is definitely something she knows she's going to be investing in because it's zero implants. Everybody knows they're not the cheapest. So she's already come in with this. And, and then when she comes into the office and meets our staff and, and meets up Sheldon in person, uh, she, she's even more motivated to go. So she's already come in motivated to do Solibite on the upper. She, and she wants to do something about the lower. She sees the wear. She doesn't want the teeth to look... Uh, the way they do, she wants an improvement on the way they look, uh, so she's ready to go. So we, when we go into the consultation room, what we always do, and again, if you've seen our past webinars, you will see that we're big on education with showing patients their own pictures, showing them their x-rays, showing them their CAT scans, so we can really explain to them the treatment that's been, that has been recommended. and coach them along using their own pictures and their own x-rays. So in in the consultation room, the first thing we say is, um, you, you know, do you have any questions about what, what Dr. Sheldon was explaining? Um, do you, uh, Is there anything that, you know, he didn't clarify, anything that you're, you know, that, 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 that's confusing? Um, this patient was ready to go. And as we're talking to her, there's a poster sitting in front of us, or in, it's in front of her, um, kind of in between us. So she's looking at this poster the whole time that we are discussing what her options are. And this poster, by the way, we've gotten from BioHorizon. It's an amazing poster. So many of our patients comment on this poster. It sells our implants for us, to be honest with you. They see this lady and they always say, I don't want to look like that. I, I don't care what you do. I don't want to look like that. They're seeing how her face has collapsed. They're seeing how the chin and the nose are coming together. This is a picture that no woman wants to become. And she sees this. So we're explaining the implants on the upper. And we're explaining redoing the bridge on, on, on the lower. So when Jennifer is explaining this, this case to her, she's already given her the quote for the upper solibite. And the quote for the upper solibite was $28,000. So she already has that. And as she's going over the quote for the lower, she's telling her, she's saying, we are going to remove this bridge. We're going to have to do a wax up so we can get a correct lineup of the teeth. We're going to be doing a new bridge on the lower, which is 11 units of a bridge. We are going to be doing some crown lengthening to, to correctly fit the bridge and get the cosmetics to achieve. Uh, and so with all this, the, the cost of that bridge is over $28,000. It's $28,645. And Jennifer doesn't even have to get the words out of her mouth that maybe Solibite is the best option for the lower because it costs less money and you're going with, with the implants. The patient looks at this poster and says, well, how about if I just get the same thing on the lower? So then we're showing her the models. 
the models um, also is a great tool. She's able to hold in her hand what we're going to be putting into her mouth. So she can feel the ceramic, she can see the ceramic, she can see how the palette is, is um, free, she can see how the prosthetic um, stays in the mouth by going through the prosthetic to the implants and being screwed in. Uh, so we can demonstrate so much with this being in her hand as we're talking to her. It, it, the color is attractive. The lineup is attractive. Everything about this is attractive. Plus, she's wearing it removable right now. So she's, it's a, I guess you would call it a flipper with a partial denture. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's big. So this is very attractive to her. Uh, so for her, um, she was ready to go, and she was ready to go off the bat just because of all the stuff we lined up in place when she had found us on the Sarah Root uh, website. It, it directs her to our website. She's, she's already done the research on us, and, and this is on our website, so she's already seen it, and she's already uh, educated herself upon it, um, so she it was ready to go. So for her, um, she was really kind of helping us get along with the plan all with the excitement of getting her into the office, which is what you have to do. And it's, 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 it's an amazing feeling to have a patient that is ready to go. And you're both are cheerleaders in the room working together to get her on the schedule. Um, so she did end up accepting upper solibite, lower solibite. Um, and she wanted the first available appointment, get it going. I think she's coming in tomorrow. She's coming tomorrow. Yep. She'll do her impressions. That's how fast she wanted to move. So really here, um, I think um, the most important part of this patient as far as accepting was make sure the phones are answered correctly, make sure your staff is motivating, educating, and directing your patient, preparing them to come in for what you have. Second, the doctor phone call to back that up and be the other um, person, that did the second touch to get them excited about coming in. Um, your front desk warm and welcoming when she comes in, having things like the poster, having things like the models they can hold in their hand, seeing a picture and get ready to go. And also uh, when going into the financial, give the options. When she had options to go by, which I always say even if an option is an upper denture, it's an option. Give them options to go with because patients like to be able to feel like they have that option. That, Usually when you don't give options, they feel like it's pressure. Okay, well, I don't want to do that. And it, it, they don't, they can't think about it. It's like, okay, I have to do this. It's, that's all I can do. And they don't like that feeling. So give options. Um, w one of the, the treatment planning sessions that we did, that we just did actually not too long ago, was in the financial. Um, I say, you know, you can do um, an implant, you can do a bridge, or you can do a flipper. Um, and I always back it up with, you know, a flipper is something typically people do if they can't afford anything else. It's still an option, but I'm not making it sound wonderful. I'm letting them know if you have to, you have to, but most people don't do it. And explaining each one along the way, that way they feel like, oh, okay, well, I'm not doing that one. And then really deciding on the one that I would say most patients go with the most predictable replacement, which is a dental implant. So that's what I do in there. So that's what we do. And listen, there's nothing wrong with saving teeth. And I like to save teeth. And frankly, I thought the treatment plan to save the teeth was a good treatment plan. I really did. It's actually more difficult to do it that way. Um, cost was about the same as dental implants. I never know that. Um, you never know the cost of anything when you're in there. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Essentially, here's what I would do. And then they add up the cost. And that much would be for dental implants. And there's sometimes when I just insist, I said, there's no way on earth. Um, that uh, we're going to do it that way. I want to save the teeth. And frankly, it's going to be a lot more comfortable if you save the teeth. And I say that just about every time. But then it becomes a cost uh, uh, situation. And don't forget, the patients had recurrent caries on nearly every tooth there. So if we're looking for predictability, um, and particularly at her age, that uh, the dental implants may be more predictable. Yes, there's more proprioception from natural teeth. No question about that. And we have to go through those arguments so the patient has a full appreciation of what she is getting, but once we go through that, then the patient does have a choice. The patient has the opportunity to make that choice. Remember, we've talked about, and I'm changing the subject just a little bit, but I'm repeating what I said for those of you who weren't out of the beginning, multiple sources of referrals, multiple sources of referrals, that we just don't have a referral pot that says general dentist. That doesn't exist, or it's, it's certainly reducing existence. So we've got to open up those avenues. The fact that I aligned myself with another dental implant company, Sarah Root, which is good. People are looking for ceramic implants. Now, I've got to warn you, the people who are looking for ceramic implants are not necessarily the most 
the easiest patients to get along with? <laughs> No, they're not. All right. I mean, <laughs> if you're going to drive 150 miles for me to do an implant, there's something wrong. There are a few other yeah. people. Yeah. I mean, yes, I'm one of the best, <laughs> of course. But there, there's probably somebody who's close to my mm -hmm. level of skill um, uh, within that 150-mile radius. But um, so you got to understand these people are a little bit difficult, and the part of the reason that we charge more money is not because the implant – cost that much more. The implant costs six hundred dollars rather than a normal implant costing somewhere between two and three hundred dollars depending on how many implants you buy. Um, it is all of the other factors that are involved uh, and there are sometimes that you know we'll just have the conversation on the phone and the patient will decide not to drive here and that's fine. Um, but uh, essentially you could um, buy a few steroid implants, get on their list and here you've got a fifty or sixty thousand dollar case. So um, don't discount that. And the Cerrud people are great, just great to deal I mean, this is not a commercial for, for Cerrud, but the Cerrud people are great to deal with. Um, they'll train you on the phone. They'll train you online. They're all dentists. Those are the people who who, um, who, uh, who, who own the company, the Olivas. They're from Barcelona, Spain. are outside of Barcelona, and they have one representative. One of the brothers is here. He's in Los Angeles uh, promoting his implant, um, and that's Javi Oliva, X-A-V-I. Um, the other brother is Josep Oliva. He's uh, in Spain, as I said. He's a periodontist. So, I mean, you've got sharp people who are running this company. Um, I think that's it. Yes. Okay. Did but you get something tuned. out of it? We have something upcoming. Yeah, stay tuned. You're going to have to go on another site or another link in order to be able to get to us um, at 9 Eastern. Look forward to talking to them, and we'll talk to you again those, uh, I don't know, what, a couple of weeks? Yeah, couple we'll weeks. be there. All right, good. Thanks. Have a good night.